Um, okay, so we can now move to the pitching session. So I'd like to call on stage our judges first. So let me call first. We have Baz Grotzka, founder and managing director at Acrobator. Welcome, Baz. How are you doing? Very good. Um, second judge we have here today with us is Eric Anderson. CMO at Startup Wise Guys. Welcome, Eric. How are you doing? Then we have, here is it, from the other side of the stage, Angel Garcia Rivas, founding partner at Startup Bootcamp, Internet of Things and Data. Welcome, Angel. And the fourth judge is Igor Shoifot from TMT Investments. He's running a little late, so I will start with uh, three judges, apparently. So before we started with the pitches, I see the first company is already ready. I'd like to uh, recap a little what the structure of pitches is. So we're going to have a two to three minutes presentation from the companies, and then we will have a five minutes Q&A from our awesome judges. Um, OK, I think we can start. Before we start, one very last thing, which is I'd like to ask to our judges to make a quick introduction of themselves so that you can actually know who they are. Uh, don't miss what they're saying, because we're not going to repeat it for every pitching session. So it's either now or never. Angel. Hi, thank you. My name is Angel Garcia. I'm a founding partner at the Startup Bootcamp Barcelona. Startup Bootcamp is probably one of the best accelerators in Europe. Uh, we accelerate the startups with programs running in several European cities like London, Amsterdam, Copenhagen, Berlin, and others. Um, this is one of the things that I'm doing. I'm founding partner at the Startup Bootcamp. I'm also running a small venture capital fund, investing in at early stage uh, European startups. And, and that's it. Thank you very much. Bas. Bas Gotska. Hi. Uh, I'm a digital marketeer. I've done that for 15 years in e-commerce uh, in Australia, America, Europe. I'm Dutch myself, and I love Ukraine, but I only have one startup so far that I've invested in here. So I'm here to look for opportunities. Uh, my company, Acrobator, is a funny mix of an angel fund that has 30 portfolio companies, mainly Russian, Kazakhstan, Europe. And it's also a bit of a boutique uh, internet marketing consultancy. So we help uh, internet shops that have above $100 million revenue. We help them get to the next kind of $500 million. So that's in short what I've been doing. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. So my name is Eric. I'm originally from Los Angeles, but I moved to London to work with Techstars, and now I'm with Startup Wise Guys, which is a B2B accelerator in Tallinn, Estonia. Uh, previously, I've had a couple of my own companies, and it's a pleasure to be here. First time in Kiev. Thank you very much. So we can start with the first company. Please welcome on stage Shelly Nankioliar from the Ivory Company. Thank you, Victoria. Did you say there was two plus three, five minutes? No, yes. two minutes. Hi, Shelly Nankioliar. Nice to meet you. <laughs> be kind to us, please. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Great, thank you. This one. Okay. Good afternoon. It's great to be here and to present to you the Ivory Company. Let me start by talking about why you should invest in the US. I think the key thing to think about the US is one of the few countries in the world today that is back from the global brink of death and is doing really well from an economic perspective. Uh, the overall U.S. currency is strong against the euro, against Japan, against the British pound. The key economic indicators, if you look at unemployment, look at GDP growth, and look at uh, your overall um, um, strength in the market, the U.S. is doing very well. Other key factors to consider is that the housing market, the e-commerce growth, and every key indicator when it comes to investing in the U.S. is very strong. So you should absolutely consider investing in the US. The second thing is why invest in a sector that I'm gonna to talk to you about, which is home decor. Home decor is a very large market, $150 billion in the US. Not only that, it's predicted to grow very strongly over the next five to seven years. So a lot of 
opportunity there. The sector that we're going after, or the segment, is white, a color that is predominant in the home decor industry, and we think that represents alone about 50, uh, you know, 30 to $40 billion of opportunity. The business model we're going after is a proven business model in the US. They're very successful players that have made a lot of money in it, and we're just taking their model and launching, launching with it. It's an attractive model in the sense it's got very good margins, uh, it's high growth, it's unique and distinctive merchandise, so it is all the promise of success. Uh, the name of the company, as I said, is the, it's the Ivory Company. The concept is a brand. It's a home decor premium brand in the U.S. market primarily. It's omni-channel, so the center of it is e-commerce. There's some stores and there's some catalogs to support it. We have a booth down here and you can have a look at us. We have a very strong management team that's global, well experienced, and have built billion dollar businesses before. Again, like I said, it's a very attractive model with very high margin. My background, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've started up several businesses very successfully. I built three or four businesses that have gone to a billion dollars and I want to do this one more time. I know this business inside out. I know how to make it to grow and I know I can deliver the results I'm, uh, that you, know, you would be looking for as a potential investor. Uh, here's some of our quick historical revenues. We started about 12 months ago. Uh, we've been in uh, six, 12 months in market, 16 months ago we formed. We've had strong growth right out of the top. We're, we're doubling every quarter and we continue to grow very fast. As an investor, here's what I would ask you to consider on your checklist. If you take a checklist and you say, is this company worth investing in? Think about the key things you want to think about, which is, this is more than an idea. It's a real presence. It's a real business. It operates every day. It operates in a large market. It is high growth sector. Uh, it has strong e-commerce growth. Uh, it's good profitability. Anyway, you can read the list for yourself. It just goes down. And essentially, there's an easy exit down the road. So it's a really straightforward, quick investment with high returns. Uh, if you look at some of the players in this sector, you can see their growth in the last five years. They've gone from being very small to very big businesses, and, and their, their, uh, their complete market value has gone up tremendously. Williams-Sonoma, which used to trade at about $7 at the start of 2008, is now trading at about $60. So everything is on an upward trend. Right time, right business, the right kind of investment you should consider. With that, thank you for your attention. I look forward to questions. Thank you very much, Shelley. You're welcome. Uh, judges, if you have any question for Shelley, Buzz. Hi, in your checklist of uh, investment, there's nothing about marketing except a little bit about brand. What's your customer acquisition cost? And how do you feel that that's a scalable element in your business model? Thank you, that's a very good question. Just like any other consumer business, customer acquisition at the start of the business is pretty high. So our customer acquisition right now is about 120%, but we break even on the second sale and we're profitable by the third sale. Our rebuy rate, which is one of the metrics we look at, which is how many people buy within what time frame, we know that 45% of our customer buy a second time within 12 months, and about 23% uh, buy three times within a year. So if you take the overall profile of the customer base, within a year it's profitable. Not entirely satisfied, because this lifetime value approach basically is based on a very small number of, of clients you've had so far in a relatively short period. Why don't you try to get it already ROI positive on the first acquisition? I mean, how are you gonna get there? That's a great question. I don't think in the US market, because of its maturity, anyone can hope to get uh, you know, sort of profitable within their first transaction. I think our goal is to try and be profitable within overall uh, well, we, we'll be profitable as a business within 12 months from now. We do have high margin, you're right. I think what we think we can be profitable within is about uh, a 1.5%, one uh, one, one and a half time purchase. But trying to be conservative. I, I just want to make sure that you know, we don't overpromise and deliver. Thank you. I mean, we can go on a long time about it, but uh, <laughs> we'll do that with You can talk about that uh, afterwards. Uh, are there any more questions from the judges? Angel? Uh, thank you for the presentation, very good presentation. I just wanted to understand what are your, the bigger challenges that you see in the company going forward. 
I don't see a lot of challenges. I built businesses like this before. The last business I built, I took to a billion dollars. Similar business. I think it's just a question of getting the right funding. I'm seeing the trends in the business are identical to the first one I built. I think you know customer acquisition is always a challenge because it's a mature market. And as the market matures, co competition gets stronger and the price for customer acquisition gets higher and higher. But I think we've been, we've got there in the right time and the natural growth in the market should help us. Eric. So you had a lot of really good information, but you didn't say what your company was at first. And if I didn't have read uh, previously what you do, I would have been completely lost. But that being said, uh, it was really good information. It like seems like you know what you're doing and it seems you present really well. Um, but I think many of the people in the audience were probably a bit lost about what you did. Eric, I appreciate that feedback. I think the three minute format sort of flexed me a bit. I should have started by saying it's a premium luxury home decor concept being sold directly to customers. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So second startup on stage, we have Sergei Sosnov from Zen Assets. Hello guys, we're Zen Assets, and we believe it's time to challenge the status quo and change the way people invest their money. Up until recently, there were two ways to invest in financial markets. Either use traditional banks or wealth managers that give you, that give you good service but are quite expensive, or use online brokers that give you good selection of uh, financial products, uh, low cost execution, but at the same time, they ask you to make your own investment decisions. Now there is an alternative, Zen Assets. Uh, let's have a look at what we do. We combine professional portfolio management, easy to use investment platform, and by employing low cost products, we increase our clients' returns by up to 30% over the investment cycle. Uh, speaking of market size, market is huge. Uh, it's about $40 trillion in investable assets globally with average revenue of about 1%. But we're obviously not going broad. We're going very, very um, focused. And we're looking currently at affluent professionals in the UK, which are about 3 million people with about $300 billion in assets. And we think that there is at least $1 billion in revenue potential. Uh, sounds quite as a quite good idea. So are there any competitors out there? There is Wealthfront and Betterment in the US. And there is Nutmeg in the UK. How are we different from them? I think competition, primarily in the UK, is based on several misconceptions. They think that mass market clients understand the value of investing. They think that it's easy to convert people who never invested before, and there are enough pains for people to switch from their existing providers. We actually view, uh, view the world in a little bit different way. We think that retail investors are scared and confused by financial markets. Uh, they have little time, and they're bored by numbers and people are conservative and they don't want to change their behavior. So as a result, what we do? We actually focus on very, very narrow segment. Affluent professionals, so people who are about 30 to 45 years old, they have significant online presence, they're high, they're high income, and they've likely invested before, so they know the pains of investing. So we concentrate on them and hear how the product works. We assess clients' uh, financial personality, uh, then we select uh, optimal investment mix, we do due diligence on products, so we execute and invest in that portfolio. And then we manage portfolio so clients can relax and enjoy whatever things they like doing in life. Uh, our pricing model is quite simple. It's probably about 75% cheaper than what traditional players offer right now. So it's all in simple fee of half a percent per year. And then there is a little bit of uh, product cost on top of that, which means that over investment cycle, if you've invested hundred thousand dollars you probably will make around three hundred fifty thousand with Zen assets with 250 through traditional channels so about hundred thousand dollars pick up of the team uh, I think we have pretty pretty good team I spent six years at Goldman Sachs managing money for private individuals with uh, more than billion dollars in assets under management we have uh, developers we have CIAs four MBAs some of our team is sitting there so we think we're perfectly qualified to deliver and what have we achieved so far? 
we built prototype, then MVP, got financial license, signed up first customers. We actually launched in beta mode about a month ago. We're currently improving our design and uh, looking to sign up more customers just to further test the, to further test the product and uh, have a full launch in about a month's time with updated design and automatic um, client sign-up process. Here we go. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. <laughs> Question from the public. Who's first? Angel. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell you something that you already know, that you are in a huge market with a lot of big players. I mean, you are a former Goldman Sachs, you said. Um, What's, what's, what is your magic thing? I mean, what do you have different on others? I mean, and, and, and I think that it's not enough to say that we are focusing in a specific niche. What, what makes you special? What makes you different? Why I'm, why I'm going to choose you uh, to manage, what, what I'm going to choose you but to manage my, sorry? Well, at the end, it's uh, all kind of competition. I mean, all the players are attracting people with money and trying to manage investment and trying to get a, a fee in a change. I mean, how, how is your going to market this strategy and what is your special thing that are going to make me trust you in order to put my money in your hands? So, as I said, if you go against traditional managers, uh, all in fee is probably around about two and a half percent if you are higher than 50,000 pounds in the UK. If you're less than 50,000 pounds, no one is going to talk to you or you're going to be paying crazy money to get there. Uh, it's quite untransparent and it's uh, riddled with conflicts of interest because banks and in investment managers, they're basically incentivized to sell you products that benefit them rather than you because they get kickbacks. And it's quite outdated in terms of the way people interact with the platform. So it's manual, it's quite often paper-based. What we're doing, we're combining this all low-cost uh, products and execution, professional team in terms of portfolio creation, due diligence of products into a platform that gives you this easy to use, very nice feel, touch of your investments that you can see on daily basis and track what's going on. So completely transparent. So we tick the box on price, we tick the box on professional investment management, and tick the box on usability. Uh, a, a quick number question. How many clients do you need with an average portfolio size to be more or less break even and pay the whole team you have? Uh, so it's not about the number of clients, probably it's more about number of or amount of assets under management. I mean, we're kind of bootstrapped now. So it's difficult to say what, I mean, let's say break even point is half a million dollars per year, just rough, like back of the envelope calculation, we need to have about hundred million dollars under management just to get to that, which seems like a lot of money, but in fact, it's not that much. It depends what kind of strategy you use because we can use digital channels to get kind of like small and average customers. And then we can have pinpointed kind of like uh, VIP concierge service for bigger clients, which might help us to get to that number in terms of assets under management. I agree with my fine colleague judge here that uh, the uniqueness, it's still, w I mean, the cheapness is one bit, right? And at some point when you grow, you probably have to readjust your unit economics for this because you start having bigger expenses is my assumption. Uh, I'm just wondering, um, yeah, why would I trust you with, with my money? Because I don't hear about your brand. You're not backed by uh, large banks. Like, where do you feel that you can generate this converting trust factor? Is it your background? I think it's partially the background, myself and the team. Then we're not in custody of clients' money, so it's a third-party custodian. You're totally in control, plus it's completely transparent. You know what you invest into. There are no hidden charges. Everything is like, super visible, and you can check your your account every day through our system or if you want to have additional layer of trust you can go directly and check your account through a broker and in terms of as I said if you have 50,000 pounds to go like the initial fee of one of 24,000 UK independent financial advisors will be about 500 quid so if you're 10,000 pounds you give away 5% of your money straight away just to have an initial conversation you know this is like 10 times already in terms of being unique. And as I said, you don't even know what you're going to be sold. 
If you go to a bank, you have less than $100,000, you're out of business or you'll be sold some structured products with average yield of about 3.5% for the bank. So that's going to be blended fee. And in terms of products, you know, it's the same product for everyone. It's probably the same as Goldman Sachs in terms of portfolio management, asset allocation. And in terms of products, we're only using index funds, which on average is about 10 times cheaper than your typical mutual fund. And according to Warren Buffett, you know, the only way to beat the market is, you know, go with, not to beat, to actually fit into the market, is to be with low cost, uh, low cost products like ETFs. Just one last question. Okay, so very quickly, uh, presentation skills. You were just reading the slides. So you're looking back, you should speak to the audience or speak to us directly, because we can read the slides ourselves. Uh, so if you move on, like that's just something to think about. Um, you mentioned 30% increase on returns. Is that just because the, the way you're investing is cheaper or are you smarter? Or what, what's the reason for this? Because that's, that's a pretty bold claim. If you look at an average portfolio over the investment cycle, uh, medium risk probably brings you about 6.5%. Uh, of return annualized. So if you give away two to two and a half percent to banks and we're only taking half a percent, it basically means that it doesn't matter whether the market goes up or down, you're still going to be paying those fees. So in our case, just by using low cost products, by using efficient execution and by cutting overheads because we're online based, we uh, were able to save that cost for clients and turn it into an additional return. Thank you very much, Sergey. So let's go to the third pitch. We have here Anatoly Stepaniuk from Easley. Hi, everyone. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. One, two, three. Hi, everyone. My name is Anatoly, and I would like to start with a question, both to our judges and the audience. When was the last time you were looking for an apartment or a flat online? Yes. <laughs> well, hi. As you see, it's actually quite often. And you know how it uh, happens usually. You go to some search engine, real estate site, you specify some parameters like uh, number of bedrooms, a location, a price range, and after that, you get an endless list of search results, and you have to compare all these offers by yourself. It usually takes me a lot of time, but we thought uh, how great it would be if you could just simply say what you need and just get it. So this is Isley. Isley is a voice recognition real estate agent. To find a apartment or office or flat, all you have to do is just simply say, uh, speak to Isley in a plain and natural language, something like that. Hi, Isley. I need a nice place in a Osakurki neighborhood. This is a neighborhood in Kiev. Uh, I'm ready to pay four and a half thousand a month, and I want this flat to have a boiler, a washing machine, and a fast internet connection. And that's it. Once you say that, you get the most relevant offers. It's not a great list of offers, just a uh, few of them, three or four, but uh, the ones that correspond really to your request. And the main point here is every time you speak to Easley, hundreds of real estate agents compete for your request. And that means that you get not only the relevant offers, but also for the best price. Usually when you use a real estate agent, uh, he will take um, some commission from you. In Ukraine, it's uh, about 50% of your month's rate. but. When you use easily, the real estate agent understands that he is not the only one in this competition. So this is why he, uh, he will either make his commission lower or avoid it totally. So if you want to find your place, uh, a relevant place, really quickly and cheap, use easily. And by the way, we have a booth here. So if you'd like to check it out and, and try to speak to easily, please, you're welcome. So if I'm a real estate agent, why would I use this? If, if I was a real estate agent, why would I use this if I'm going to make less money? I had only two minutes and I didn't, talk to, no, didn't have time to say that. But for real estate agents, it's a really great offer. In our, in our case, we give him a real estate leads for free. I mean, on our 
on all the other services like Zillow, Trulia, and other sites, you have to pay in advance for advertisement or to pay in advance for your leads. But in our case, we give the leads for free. And only in, in the case when he closes the deal and makes money with Easley, we take 20% of his revenue. So this is the point why it's so great for real estate agents to cooperate with us. I'm a little bit stunned because in this presentation, only the nice little gadget of the speech element and a tiny bit of the business model is clarified. But I have no clue now about, uh, is it, a, it's not a voice recognition. It's just kind of a voicemail and then all the real estate agents have to listen to it or you have some amazing technology that understands and filters out the washing machine and everything. What, that, that's the first question. Second question is, uh, isn't this just a nice little gadget on top of all the databases that people can copy? If, if uh, cian.ru or OLX or whatever adds this, how, how do you feel that you are secured against this copycatting of a nice idea? Uh, so those two questions. Okay, I understand your question. So the first one was, co was considering the business model, right? Um, could you repeat, please, the, uh, about the business model? So basically, I just want to understand, like, you take, uh, let's take it step by step. So if you take the content, is it from the various real estate databases, all the apartments? Let's do a question and answer session like this. Okay. So how, where do you get the content from? First of all, we'll use some databases to firstly get some content. But as you understand, to make this technology work, I mean, when I ask for, for a washing machine I, I, and I get a washing machine, uh, this information is not enough. We, we've got to refine the information that we put inside. Sorry to interrupt. Where do you get it from? Do you parse websites or do you? No, we do not parse websites. We've got our, uh, our own base and this is the reason why we feel secure. We've got a lot of work to do to make this base and real estate agents will do the, all the job here. So they uh, add an object to the system and they specify what um, great things it has. For example, a washing machine or high ceilings or wooden floor. I mean, the information you can find on any other place how many products? How many, how many objects? Well, uh, unlimited number of objects. You can add anything, any keyword you want. I mean, how many houses do you, you you've pr been sitting doing data entry, you've got these objects, objects, Nidvision. Every real estate agent has several objects in his base. Uh, so sometimes it's hundreds of them, and sometimes it's just tens of them. And every real estate agent that wants to work with Easley has to add his object into the system and add some specification for this uh, really deep search to work. And then I understand that the money you get from uh, the, the tenant, the, the person that will rent or not. We don't take money from tenants. We get our money from real estate agents. When real estate agent closes the deal, we take money from him. Why not? Why do you have this voice recognition technology? Is that solving an actual problem? Or is this just some like a cool gimmick that uh, you're getting people to use your service? Well, as you understand, the, the voice recognition is not the main point. Voice recognition is, in our vision, the most easiest way to say what you need. But actually, we are solving the problem of finding real estate. We are solving the problem that uh, you cannot find what you need on Zillow, even if you exactly know what you're looking for. You are approaching a market that is... Uh I mean, a lot of people in this market with different technologies, with different approaches, but at the end you are competing for the same customers. That is you, me, and, and at the end should be a business with thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of users. How are you going to get that? How are you going to, to attract customers in this so crowded, constrained space? Because sometimes you might have the Best technology in the world, but if nobody knows about you, that doesn't make sense. How are you going to do that? Well, here's uh, the point where voice recognition helps us because it's unique and it, this is unusual. Uh, actually, this concept of easily, the voice recognition concept, is, is, uh, has a 
high interest in Medium. For example, in Ukraine, we've got some publications about our projects just because, uh, because this is interesting, this is unique. And about the competition, I would like to say that uh, we do not compete with Zillow for traffic. We do not compete for, with Zillow for your time. But we compete with Zillow for the lead you leave. So we want you to leave the request on our site. And after this, you can go back to, 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 to our competitors and continue your search there. But once we got the lead, we can work with you and we can make money with the help of our agents. Thank you very much. If there is one thing I noticed that our judges today are very, very strict. So that's good. That's actually good that we have three instead of four. Otherwise, it would have been too tough probably for the competitors. So let's go to the fourth pitch. We have here Alexander Lastovsky from Scroll Mall. Hi, thank you. Can I have a clicker? Yeah, it's there. Hi, my name is Alex, and I'm, I'm going to tell you about the Scroll Mall, which is a new app to trade things with your friends. So um, initially, we saw that the Instagram generation is not happy, and they're not happy because they can't buy from their friends on Instagram easily. They can't uh, follow their friends on the eBay, and neither app lets them swap. And we've checked, and there are actual numbers behind this. So. On the Instagram alone, worldwide, there are 200 mil million transactions per year. And that's not even having the, the buy and sell button. And um, uh, every month, there's $1 billion worth of goods changing hands using the social net networks. And um, what we actually did, we created a scroll mall, uh, a mobile application that to trade things easily, share them with friends, and give away or receive as gifts. And we believe that there is a space for this, even having eBay and Craigslist and OLX in place, because there are so many people and so many transactions that would like to sell things with the social features, with the follows, uh, with the likes, with the interest, with geographic proximity, and so forth. So scroll modes allow to tra trade things, publish offers, discover new things, place public or private offers just for friends or everybody except friends, and negotiate deals within the application with instant push messages, and even make payments using your mobile phone and order delivery service immediately. Whoa. So meet the scroll mall. Um, we are in the app store already, and we are uh, targeting Uh, we are targeting Ukraine, Poland, and United States at the moment. Uh, we are uh, focusing on the, uh, four segments, which is the, the fashion, the, the ki uh, kids' goods, uh, the books, and the electronics. And what we are going to do in the next few months is we are going to, uh, for, for every city, to make sure we have enough users and enough offers to uh, get this thing going. And uh, other than that, we also have a great team uh, with over one billion of uh, yearly revenue under management in our previous positions. Uh, thank you very much. That's probably it. Question from the judges. Yep. Thank you for the presentation. Um, the problem with the apps is there are millions of apps. And we just uh, want to have in our cell phone 30, 40, something like that. What you're trying to do, at least myself, I already know three players that are doing the same. Um, one of them in South of Europe, or they raise 20 million euros, called Wallapop, probably you know. I mean, there is, is plenty of players that are doing quite something similar. So at the end, it's about the money. About the money that you are able to raise, about the money that you are able to invest in order to get users, and later on, uh, try to get this user to pay some money back to you. So the challenge is not about the technology. It's, uh, unfortunately, at the end, the challenge is about the ability to raise funds. Because if you are not raising enough money, you don't have the ability to get customers on board, because there are other apps uh, 
making promotion and doing the same. So what's your plan to, to fight against that? I mean, against other big players? Because at the end, any different app are going to be two or three big winners, are not going to be 20. Um, as happens with, uh, there is one big winner in, 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 in messaging, is WhatsApp and Line and others. There is one big winner in pictures, Instagram and others. How you're going to fight against that? Because it's a real threat. Well, um, since we are a social selling and buying platform, uh, we, we have networks effects. And that's a fact, we, we already have the numbers. Uh, we, we have a nice conversion ratio. When, when we attract one user, he places two offers and invites three of their friends to join. Um, so that's one. So it, it will be quite cheaper than to sell a Tetris, for instance, over, over the App Store. Uh, and then um, uh, we also um, deal with local merchants who are always willing to sell their handmade stuff and fashion stuff. We will check that in Kyiv. We are about to check that in Poland and United States. They are willing. Uh, they are already placing offers of their own clothes and uh, uh, handmade things, and attract their own audiences as well. Um, and uh, speaking of why should we become the, the one applications that wins the market, it's going to be a, a challenge, of course. Uh, but we do believe that we are able to do this because we know how to build large companies and because we've checked all the steps of the whole procedure from the installation of the application uh, through the uh, activation, through the first offer, first dialogue, closing the deal, we know all the numbers and it works. Yes, yes it's not a question, yes, it's, it's our recommendation. If you, if you want to succeed in this kind of business, uh, first, let's try to grow local I mean, for virality, that is what you're looking for. Density is extremely relevant. I mean, I need the, all the people in the room using your app in order to, to, to go viral, okay? This is the first thing. And second thing is, it's becoming extremely expensive to getting customers through Google Ads or this kind of thing. Um, and it's not creating a real brand. The problem with that is you have to create a real brand that people recognize that scroll more, whatever, is the way to exchange things between my friends or whatever. In order to do that, in, in, in some parts of Europe, is, is, is having some exit, the media for equity deals. You are familiar with that, media for equity? So big t TV or whatever that is, is, are getting shares in exchange for promoting your, your program. Just, just some comments about it. So very quickly, I completely agree. You, how can you, without taking over your local market, how can you go to the US? So focus on local, and I would even say um, specify on a specific product as well. So what's the most uh, traded product on your platform at the moment? What's the most, I'm sorry, kind of uh, Traded platform, or product on your platform. Okay, so um, right now it's uh, uh, fashion. Not the high heel fashion, but rather something that's uh, more urban and uh, uh, for instance, um, every small shop that trades on the fair shows and so forth, they are willing to, uh, to, to use the platform. And we actually did a, a small road show here in Kyiv. We got everybody who was there. So uh, smaller um, clothing shops, that's the most traded thing right now. But we also expect electronics to catch up later. And we also expect kids and uh, uh, books. Cool. So I would just say specialize and focus on one thing, maybe two, if you see like two really big opportunities, but don't, don't try and do eight different things or everything. I'm a bit quiet because I like the idea. Uh, but so there are a lot of people, but uh, companies as well. I'm just thinking uh, those people you were talking about, hi most highly traded is fashion. Uh, people upload two items. Is it not a little spike and then after a month, they get bored with it, and it lands in the top, in the in the ten percent, in the ninety percent of unused apps. Uh, what is your way to revive? Do you really see? Uh, do you have enough data now to see that there's a sustainability in this behavior? Because I've got some sort of intuitive worry that it's, it's something you try once and then you get bored with it or something. So how do you feel? Is that already the case sometimes, or, or do you have a smart mechanism to? Revive this. 
Well, uh, first of all, we are completely data-driven. So we use mixed panel for mobile analytics, track all the conversions and so forth. Uh, we do have a bump, everybody does. It's more, it's more like 30% uh, down on the third day. Uh, but we also have this uh, nice thing that when the user installs the app, he does publish something. Uh, and um, uh, uh, since, well, uh, for those few hundred users, we currently have 47,000 so-called offer views, like page views, but for, for offers. And that's quite a lot. And uh, I mean, uh, this is one of the things we watch, watch for, so that the, every item gets that, that gets published in the system uh, has a, a high viewability. And, uh, uh, and also, uh, people do react with messages. So we, we already have a few thousand messages and uh, uh, up to 100 of closed deals. So, uh, and we're only two months old. So I'm, I'm not quite sure what the uh, total customer lifetime spend for this product will be, but I, ex I expect it to be uh, close to what other social networks are, like Instagram or Facebook. So it, it's, if, if it's for you, you stay, you stay basically forever. I guess so. Thank you very much.